Hi, welcome to the virtual orientation for the Autumn Ridge Outfitter 26 BHS by StarCraft. We're going to begin the orientation on the outside of the RV and we're going to start near the front. First thing that we'll look at is your front pass-through storage compartment from the door side. You're going to find a couple of uh, important things in here along with the light. We have a bit that can be used with an impact driver to utilize with your stabilization jacks that are located at the four corners of the RV. Also in this front storage compartment, you will see our manual cranks for your electric tongue jack and for your stabilization jacks. Now if we drop down and take a closer look at your stabilization jack, we have four of these. They're located at the four corners of the RV. They should never be used to level your RV. They should only be used to stabilize. So once you have your RV mostly level, uh, you would then snug these up to the ground or uh, any blocking that you may have to use. On that note, it is recommended that you come prepared with blocking depending on the campsite or area that you're camping in. These may not travel all the way to the ground, so you may need to have some blocking in order for these to snug up to the ground. Recommended would be six by sixes. Usually work pretty good. Don't often need anything more than a six by six at any given point, but definitely handy to have some on hand. Continue our way along the outside of the RV. The next thing that we're going to come to is your battery storage area. And right directly in front of the battery storage area, we will come to your propane storage. This is a double bottle 30 pound uh, system with a crossover regulator to connect the two bottles. What this crossover regulator means or does, if you can see this little handle here that's pointing towards this bottle, that means the system will draw from this tank first. However, once it drops below a predetermined amount of pressure, it will automatically cross over and draw from the other bottle, regardless of where this handle is pointing. That way on the uh, cold nights, if you're running your furnace, you run out of propane, you don't have to come out and manually switch your bottles over, the system will do it for you. Okay, so directly in front of your uh, propane storage, we have your electric tongue jack. The first thing to note on the electric tongue jack is this rubber stopper here. Once removed, this will give you access to the crank so that you can utilize the manual crank in the front storage compartment there, uh, right in here through this port once the stopper is removed. And you can always have the ability to lower and raise your, your tongue no matter whether you have power or not. Also on this jack, you'll see that we have switching for the light up front. It's good for loading, especially at night or uh, hitching up at night. And then we have the uh, retraction and extension of the jack itself. So I come down and the next thing we'll take a, a closer look at is your safety breakaway switch. Connected to the tow vehicle via the loop end here. In the event that the tow vehicle and the RV are separated, this loop attached to the tow vehicle will pull the pin free of the housing from your breakaway switch, thus engaging your trailer brakes. I have noticed that this cord gets stepped on or pulled so that the uh, brakes were engaged, but uh, it wasn't as obvious as this was still attached. So if you ever find that's the case, uh, take a quick little look and make sure this is seated fully in the housing. So we continue to make our way along the outside the front, just make quick note of your uh, off-door access. They have a uh, provided spray hose to use with the outdoor shower and the supplied spray ports. Next thing we'll come to is the 50 amp power supply and cable. We do uh, provide you with this here. This will drop you down from the 50 amps to a 30 amp plug end. And then inside we provide you with a conversion block to take you from a 30 amp plug in to a 15 amp. 
Now on the 15 amp plug-in, you will not be able to run everything at the same time. That uh, most specifically the air conditioning. So just keep that in mind, but it will allow you to keep your food cold and your fridge going and stuff like that. Okay, so we have your docking station here. So we open up the docking station. First thing to make note of is this handy little kickstand here. Holds the door open for you. And it does have some directions on the lid, including how to winterize. So if you make note here, this first diagram shows you that this valve has a function in either position other than just on or off. So when it's pointing down like this, that will open up your city water connection when you have a garden hose connected to here. This is how you would pressurize your system. So either a garden hose from home or from a campground uh, connected to this point with then the water turned on. Pressure water rises your system in the RV much like the system at your house is pressurized from its own city water connection or own supply from the city. If you turn the valve handle Sorry, with the valve handle in this position, that is your city water connection. If you turn the valve to this position here, uh, this would fill your fresh water tank. So with your garden hose connected to here, same as the scenario I gave you before, uh, and the valve handle in this position, you're actually filling your fresh water tank. And in this direction, you're, you're utilizing a city water connection and pressurizing the onboard system that way. Your black tank flush located right next door here. Always important to make sure that the uh, valve handles on your black water or gray water open first and that you have your sewer hose connected right here and connected to your uh, your sanitary system at either the RV or wherever it is that you're you're dumping your black water tank. Make sure it's connected on this end, make sure your valve handle there is open and ready to go and then you can go ahead and connect the garden hose and turn on the water and it'll spray around and flush it all out. Uh, also down here we have the valve handle for your gray water as well. So the other item of interest in this area other than your spray port that can be used with the spray nozzle, we also have your main input for cable or satellite TV for the RV right in here. Let's continue along the back. We'll make note of the housing for the rear view camera body. That offers you a pre-wired location to ins easily install a rear view camera. The rear view camera itself can be purchased separately uh, from here and easily installed. Also on the rear of the RV, at the back here, we have the outside access to your hot water tank. You'll notice the uh, drain cap and the pressure relief valve, the two important aspects. If you're ever removing the drain cap to uh, drain your hot water tank, always make sure that the pressure relief valve is open. Continue along the outside. Come to your little outdoor refrigerator setup. Complete with a drawer and a 120 volt electricity supply or power supply. And just like the other side of the RV there where I showed you that there was a shower where the spray hose works, here is a spray port itself that would give you, uh, give you some functionality with the included spray hose. Underneath the awning here, we have a few items you'll see that we need to talk about. The first I'll make note of are the two speakers. They can be used in conjunction with the stereo on the inside of the RV. The next thing I want to spend a minute to talk about is the venting for your refrigerator. It is important that this remains obstruction free at all times. If anything is covering this and we don't have maximum airflow, then the refrigerator most likely won't function properly. Now if we drop just below the outside access to your refrigerator, we'll notice the venting for your furnace. Now it does say that it's hot right on there. The only way, reason why I make a special mention of it because it is on outside underneath your awning. So the likelihood that you or somebody else might come in contact with it is higher. These do get hot, so uh, make sure no one touches them when the furnace is in use. Also on this side, 
We have the venting for your uh, range hood, for your range hood fan. You'll see that there's these little tabs here. Make sure you push them out. Uh, now this is ready to go for use, uh, but when you're not uh, using the RV, it's always important to click those closed. So before you use your range hood, if you want, actually want anything to vent outside, make sure you go ahead and pop those two tabs open. We will make note that we have a 120 volt power underneath the uh, awning. And then next to your 120 volt power supply, we have your potable water fill point. So I did show you earlier in the docking station how you can fill your potable water from there or your fresh water tank from there. However, if for whatever reason you don't want to do it via that method, we can also fill the fresh water tank via this method. Now you'd use your fresh water tank if there was a, you were camping somewhere there wasn't a water supply or if you needed to have fresh water uh, and you knew that the uh, campground you were going to did not have fresh water you could uh, fill your, your tank up with drinking water previous to uh, leaving on your trip. And you'll see that we have a low point drain here. What this low point will drain is only the fresh water tank and you'll see it here. We've come full circle, so to speak, here. So we'll head inside and we'll see what there is to learn. So one of the first things that we notice as we come through the door is your fire extinguisher. It's important to know the location of your fire extinguisher. I like the, the location just inside the door. Gives you easy access from in and outside the RV. Also down near the floor on this side, we have your carbon monoxide propane detector. You'll see that there is a green light on the front. That green light is there to indicate the system is working and functioning properly. There is a button just above that green light that you can press in order to test the system. And when you do so, that green light will go away. It'll turn to red. You'll hear a series of loud beeps, and then if the system is good to go, it will return to that solid green light with no noise. Now it's important to test the, this system every so often. I usually suggest testing it at the same time that you test your smoke detector. The standard convention for testing your smoke detector is usually every six months or twice a year at, during daylight savings or when you turn your clock forward or back. Now outside I had talked about the conversion block from 30 to 15 amps and here it is usually we keep these items just in the sink uh, and that's where you'll be able to find it when you get if you uh, purchase a new RV so directly above there we have your indication panel this is where you'll come to see your battery level your fresh black and gray water tank levels as well as controls for the slide and the awning and the switch for the main lights for the RV and for the awning lights. As we turn around and take a look, you'll see that this particular unit did not come with the television. However, if it did, the position for it would be right here. As you can see here, if you do happen to get a TV with your unit, the one important thing to note is if this red light is on, that would indicate that you're using antenna. So if you're using cable or satellite and this light's on, uh, this is in fact would indicate the antenna booster is on or the signal booster for the antenna is on. And this will often mess with your cable or satellite signal. So if you are attempting to watch via cable or satellite, make sure that red light is off and that you're not using the signal booster for the antenna. So if we drop down just below where the TV mounting position is, you'll see the stereo for the RV. The stereo comes with USB charging capabilities, as well as HDMI, Bluetooth, and an auxiliary connectivity capabilities. You'll also see that we have one, two zones. Zone one would be the speakers inside the RV. Zone two are the speakers outside the RV, the ones I showed you previously under the awning. So we step into the main bedroom of the RV. 
a couple things that we want to talk about. First, your emergency exit. In order to utilize this emergency exit, we'll push down on the black handle, push the red, or on the black tab, sorry, push the red handle up and out. Once it's perpendicular with the window or the wall of the RV, you push the handle fully out of the RV, pull this red tab to remove the screen, then you may escape to safety. So in the bedroom here, you'll notice on the wall, we have a spot marked for a television bracket. That's to indicate that there is some solid backing in behind the wall, so you could safely install a TV bracket here. And the 120 volt power and the output for the cable or satellite is provided in this area as well. Keeping on this side of the wall, we'll make note that this unit is pre-wired for solar and one of the wiring points, at least for the head unit, for the for the for your solar panels is inside the RV right here. Uh, so this would just indicate that it should be uh, a lot easier just to go ahead and connect you to, to your solar. As we come along this side of the bedroom, just want to make quick note of some USB charging ports in the bedroom area as well. One thing to make note of, if you're someone that leaves your battery connected and you're not using your RV for any longer period of time, any of these little charging ports, they will put a small draw on the battery. Nothing to be initially concerned of. However, over a longer period of time, they, they will put a draw on the battery. Just something to be aware of. So we come into the main area of the RV. Take a moment to talk about your stove top and, uh, and your oven. Always, always, always make sure before you attempt to light that you open the glass fully. And before you close, make sure the cooktop is cool. If it's still too warm, you still may shatter the glass. And before moving your RV, when you're done on your trip, I would always make sure that this is down and closed. Now in order to light your range top, we turn this to the light position there, turn the valve handle like so, works perfect, all three burners. Now in order to light the stove, there's a couple things that we have to do differently. One, always make sure you open the uh, stove door and leave it open while you're attempting to light. Two, we're going to turn it to the light position the same as we did before, however, when we're turning the sparking knob, we want to always make sure that you're pressing and holding this knob in at the same time as you light this. We slide on over to your refrigerator here. You'll see that this works on either a gas or an auto setting. Now what the auto setting does is automatically select for you between electricity and gas. If there's electricity present, it will run off that. Otherwise, it will attempt to run on gas. And then we have just the straight gas setting here. If the appliance does have any issues with lighting on gas, you'll see these uh, lights flash here. And one of the common things that uh, can happen are the, uh, the bottles aren't open yet. You for forgot to open the valves on the 30 pound bottles. Or oftentimes the, the bottles are open uh, there's just not enough pressure built up in the line, so it may take a time or two for the appliance to light. As we drop down here, we'll take a look at your load center for the RV. This is where you're going to find the breakers, much like you'd see in your house, and they function the same way. And your fuses, like you would see in your vehicle perhaps. The difference here, beside every uh, fuse or circuit, there is a red LED light that will light up to indicate that there is an issue with that circuit. Let's take a note of the bunk area and make mention of the fact that you also have some USB charging uh, capabilities in the bunk areas as well. The bottom bunk, you can lift this up to give you access to some extra storage and the inside portion of your hot water tank. So as you can see in the back of the hot water tank here we have one 
valve handle and two valve handles. Um, these are basically function as your bypass for winterizing the RV. Currently, the way these are situated, you can see that the handle is pointing into the tank. That would indicate that the water will flow through the tank. If you turn them, they would be parallel with these lines here. That would indicate that the water is going to go through this hose instead and bypass the hot water tank, which is what you would want to do when winterizing. Take a look at your thermostat here. This uses a capacitive touch, meaning it isn't a mechanical button. You just lightly press it to cycle through your options. You'll see that we have a fan. You can set it to auto high or low. We have your cool and uh, furnace as well. One thing to note, if you have the fan set too high and then turn it on to uh, the furnace, it will utilize the fan from the AC to achieve the high fan output. So if you're trying to turn the heat on and you find that the uh, AC fan is also uh, blowing air, then there's a good chance if you come back here, you'll just see this setting right here in the middle will say high. You just need to change that to the auto setting. So we step into your bathroom. And make note of your GFCI for the unit. If you come in and you see this red light on, that will mean that it's tripped. Uh, what you might also notice, also functionality at uh, various receptacles throughout the RV, most notably anything outside or near water. So if that's the case, come in here, there's a black button on the top, press that in. See the red light goes away and that would indicate that anything on the load side of this receptacle is now functioning again. Talking about your air conditioning for a bit again here, I'd like to make note of the baffles that you see on the, the top here. With these baffles closed, it will divert the air to these ports located throughout the, the RV. Uh, however, with these baffles open, the majority of the air will fall directly to the floor right here. That does it for the virtual orientation for the 2022 Autumn Ridge Outfitter 26 BHS. I hope you found the video informative and useful. I apologize if there is anything that was missed that was important to you. If that's the case, Give us a call and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you.